next uh, continue our discussion which we um, started yesterday about uh, burn management uh, today will we we will have a shorter session i will just because uh, there is uh, some question they may be asked about uh, uh, this electric burn i i am short of uh, knowledge about it i will just try to and show you some text about it okay and one thing this is also a newer article maybe uh, one and a half year ago about this uh, chemical burns okay uh, because uh, like usually now nowadays if there is a blast injury it it may be combination of uh, like uh, chemicals biological or uh, like any acid in it any like uh, uh, this uh, th th there will be combination of a number of things okay so if, if we just uh, concentrate again the theory of main like main theory of uh, resuscitation will be there, there like airway breathing circulation and you will be uh, like uh, following the same protocol which is there for any trauma patient okay or any uh, like uh, any other uh, uh, resuscitation maneuver which we do okay so clearing clearing this uh, the place because chemical will be similar to that it may be uh, as as a part of like for example in, in a laboratory any any chemical burn and there is in injury like that so maybe it is some uh, like uh, it may be associated with some trauma as well patient may fall down and maybe when this uh, like uh, this injury occur maybe there is some like associated injury so that's what so your the the basic principle will remain the same. Just a second, I think I have shared the screen. Unfortunately, I think I didn't open the screen. Just a second, please. Okay. So this is related to uh, some words about uh, chemical incidents and chemical burns. Okay. Um, like recognition of incidents, then safety safety consideration, first aid. Okay try to identify any severe cases, life-saving interventions needed, decontamination, and then you will be uh, referring to the patient uh, to advance center if it is uh, needed, okay? Uh, some words about it. Anyone has uh, read about it, this, this topic of chemical burn, like what will happen with the acid, how to treat acid burn and how to, how to treat a base? Because I, I'm a little short of uh, ideas about it. Mm. Just a second. Uh, yes, please uh, speak out, uh, Dr. Dora or Wes. Dr. Dora, you start if you if you have experienced, and Wes, you can follow. Yes, please. Uh, I think you are mute. You can unmute yourself. Sir, I do not know exactly about its management, but uh, what I know is uh, when alkali burns occur, it causes uh, liquefaction and these are deep burns. While acid, they are a uh, type of coagulopathic, uh, they coagulate the thing. So the burn is a bit superficial as compared to uh, alkali burns. Uh, that's, that's just the point I want to add. Okay, so uh, just to repeat that with acid, there is coagulation. And that are relatively superficial. And the alkali is? Yes, Aves? The alkali burns are deep. Uh, they deep. cause liquefaction and necrosis. So they go uh, goes down deep into the tissue. Okay. Okay. So how will you treat it? Uh, this I don't know, sir, uh, to be honest. Mm, just a second, because uh, this topic is in, uh, like, like I am not uh, stressed much of it. If I am unable to do it, we will just leave it for some other time, because I was thinking that this will be related to chemical burn, but this is more of the, uh, this is too much detail. Mm, but I, I think, you know, the, just a second. I think we will just, I will leave it for a while. Because I'm short of ideas rather than wasting time. I will just keep it with the poisoning. We will do it with along with poisoning. Okay, just a second. 
Okay, so what about electric burns? Actually, in electric burn, in addition, there will always be uh, an exit exit point, and the because uh, it's more like sometimes there is more more like uh, it is not uh, confined to the burn only. There is so many other events which will occur, like cardiac arrhythmias and um, uh, DIC. Okay, so we will just have a look at it. Burn injuries, electric. Electrical engineer in, include electrocution, electric shock, burns, and secondary injuries. Okay. Electric burn is used widely to describe the variety of injuries created by the uh, supraphysiological electrical energy interacting with life uh, living tissue. Uh, according to statistical point eight to one percent of accidental deaths are caused by electrical injury. These are some data about it. What will be the main problem? This is okay. Electrical burns are divided into low voltage and high voltage injuries. And the, thresh, the threshold between, uh, being 1000 volt. Uh, low voltage injuries do not have enough energy to cause destruction to significant amount of uh, uh, subcutaneous tissue, the entry and exit points normally in the fingers. Those suffer some uh, small deep burns. Okay, high voltage injuries. Uh, electrical in in uh, energy causing direct tissue damage, altering cell membrane resting potential and eliciting muscle tightening. Uh, conversion of electrical injury to thermal in uh, energy <coughs> uh, causing massive tissue destruction and coagulative necrosis. So actually this is uh, the main problem. Okay, uh, Mechanical injury with direct trauma resulting from falls or violent muscle contraction. There may be incidence of uh, rhabdomyolysis associated with it. Uh, so the, the determine will be the type of current, resistant encountered current pathway. Uh, because that's why it is always important to wear shoes while uh, manipulating any electrical equipment. Because if you, you will have a shock, but you will, uh, it will, the circuit will not be complete and um, the damage will be not as severe as it will be if you are uh, barefooted. Duration of contract. Okay. Uh, the repetitive nature of uh, alternative current increases the likelihood of current delivery to the myocardium, which can precipitate ventricular fibrillation. In contrast, DC usually causes a single violent muscle contraction of uh, often thrusting the victim away from the source. So DC uh, energy will be uh, like uh, shock will be less. Um, in general, tissues with high fluid and electrolyte content conduct electricity better. So bone is a tissue most resistant to the uh, flow of electricity. Nerve tissue is the least resistant. And together with blood vessels, muscles, and uh, mucous membrane offer a path of low resistance for electricity. Okay. So skin is the most important factor impeding current flow. It is a primary resistor against electrical current and its uh, degree of resistance is determined by its thickness and moisture. If it is moist, it, it will become more conductive. Okay. It varies from 1,000 ohm uh, from humid thin, uh, thin skin to several thousand ohms of dry uh, callosed skin. Okay. Tra Transthoracic currents can cause uh, fatal arrhythmia, direct cardiac damage, uh, or respiratory arrest. So, uh, uh, like uh, I'm just trying to read it out. And, but remember one thing that mo there will be, again, I repeat, there will be one exit point. There is uh, there will be one entry point, there will be one exit point, and according to the current, according to the situation, uh, the damage will be occurring. The result uh, ranging from local tissue or uh, like uh, muscle damage or in rhabdomyolysis to ranging to arrhythmias or pulmonary damage. Okay. Uh, transcranial currents can cause direct uh, brain injury, uh, seizure, respiratory arrest, and paralysis. Okay. And the current intensity will also determine the magnitude of injury. There may be individual variation on the energy dose for a specific effect. Uh, less energy is generally required in children who have more water content and thin skin, and hence better conductivity and less resistance. Uh, uh, these are some uh, concepts which is also there in electrical safety. We will. <clears throat> I'm trying to find, because I'm not very good in this topic, uh, I'm just trying to invite some of the speaker to make this topic easy for all of you. And this is one of my weakest 
<laughs> weakest topic in my knowledge so this uh, the concept of uh, electrical safety uh, micro shock macro shock um, inshallah it's in my agenda i'm just trying to either or either i will study some some more details about it but the, the basic concept i'm uh, giving you that um, as much as the the intensity will increase in, in uh, uh, starting from tingling it will go for the threshold for ventricular fibrillation so do you know about this let go let go current can you understand this terminology anyone please yes dr lutfia Yeah, we raise the hand, uh, Dr. Lutfia. So actually, it is the current intensity uh, uh, above which patient will not be able to leave the, the current source. Okay, so if it is less than that, uh, there may be a, a jerk and patient can leave it. But otherwise, if it is more than that, there will be something by which like for example sometime patient will fall and with that with with that fall maybe it is uh, uh, the the circuit is disconnected or the otherwise like you are just catching it and then you are not able able to leave it you 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 will see this this phenomenon more in the cartoon movies when they show that it is touched and it is not you are not able to leave it okay so this is one thing then uh, gradually increasing the tetany paralysis and ventricular fibrillation okay so this is the basic concept the the numbers you can just memorize so what will be the problems the skin burns mouth burns unconsciousness bleeding skeletal injuries there will be a wide variety if darker urine leading to arf from as i told you there will be uh, this uh, rhabdomyolysis related okay and uh, uh, there may be respiratory rest tissue edema compartment syndrome late, uh, resulting from all these happenings, okay? Numbness, paresthesia. So, Caesar, you know, sometimes even then necrosis and ischemia occur and they may need, may lead to, the, the these patient may present to you for uh, amputation, okay? So, okay. Uh, hand to hand current flow, I don't know. Okay, acute uh, emergency, shout for help, secure yourself, separate the victim from current source. The safest way to do is to shut off the current, for example, by throwing circuit breaker or switch or by disconnecting the device from an electric outlet. Treat as multi-trauma pa patient with cervical immobilization at least until the few extent of injuries has been quantified. Because if the patient is not conscious that then you, your approach will be, as I told to start with, that your approach will be airway breathing circulation disability. Okay. Uh, so your approach will be that. So ABCs, IV excess, IV fluids, ringer like that. This is just basic. No need to like, uh, uh, this is a general management. So urine output you will monitor because you are, have risk of uh, and, uh, myoglobinuria and rhabdomyolysis. Okay. So tetanus prophylaxis, analgesia, ulcer, prophylaxis okay there may, there may be uh, if there is a ventricular fibrillation you will be <clears throat> defibrillating the patient according to the acls guidelines whatever is happening this is just a list of what can be occurring then after that debridement amputation as i told you and non-viable tissue fasciotomies for compartment syndrome that will be what you will be uh, facing there will be the then it will become some of the aspects which be just like any ordinary burn area and everything but uh, there is uh, like uh, the difference will be that in that sort of burn there is uh, like related to electrolyte imbalance and things like that but here there is more of inside internal um, damage which has occurred okay. so seizures peripheral nerve damage psychiatric problems from depression to aggressive Cataracts, I think it is also because of electrocution, paraplegia, quadriplegia, deformities. I think this is okay. 
so few words about it as i told you that uh, it is a topic uh, like there will be something missing in both these topics but i'm just giving you a hint about it so you should be knowing what is micro shock what is macro shock okay uh, what are different types of electrical equipment and uh, inshallah inshallah i am just trying to work out uh, for the topics which i have not covered in the channel um, there are some topics related to inhalational induction iv induction um, basic sciences i uh, because for basic sciences you need to prepare yourself unfortunately with the busy routine uh, i'm unable to do it on a regular basis so this is it just a second so any any question uh, about uh, like uh, the discussion we have done so far any comments because there is uh, in this topic of chemical burns and electrical burn are, are a little different but rest of the things will be the same okay a smoke inhalational injury is related to um, uh, the main component actually we discussed yesterday about this carbon monoxide you see this uh, i think uh, i did not mention that uh, maybe if there is uh, after maintenance of the airway you might do need to do a bronchoscopy to do some lavage and maybe there is some internal damage which is, which is not visible to you <clears throat> so i think this one i did not mention yesterday and uh, rest of the thing will be that you are uh, just trying to treat the uh, carbon monoxide levels you will be treating with uh, either 100 percent or hyperbaric oxygen okay and uh, uh, i think we had discussed these things so any any questions please i'm i'm sorry apologize that i'm but rusty today rusty today i'm uh, quite tired after the long day any questions please Zainab, Jamal bhai, would you like to ask any question? You know, Dr. Jamal is my, uh, my medical college senior and I respect him like anything. He is also an aesthetist in Pakistan. And... Thank you very much, bro. Uh, Jamal bhai, in, in your setup, if, can you exp uh, just share some experience of uh, which you faced on which you manage related to burns? Any case, uh, any management problems or anything, um, uh, just some practical aspects if you face, like especially with reference to electric burn or uh, chemical burns, if you can share, because uh, I'm short of ideas to, to say a few words, if you can add and add. add some some points uh, actually uh, we don't have such uh, uh, things in our emergency mm -hmm. hello can you listen yeah. to me yes 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 sure uh, okay uh, actually we don't have uh, such uh, such kind of emergency uh, equipment in our um, uh, setups like uh, rural setups so i used to listen uh, your all uh, you are guiding uh, very 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 in a very good way to refresh my knowledge so uh, we used to refer all these to the care hospitals rather okay so okay actually the, <laughs> because usually in, in in only we are dealing this such things in a in a in a places where there is a proper facility for its management yes sir so, yes sir yes sir welcome so, so, okay, so inshallah, I, I used to refresh my knowledge uh, with your lectures uh, whenever I got time uh, from my <laughs> busy uh, schedule. Then I, I used to listen your uh, lectures and refresh my knowledge. Thank you so much, bro. Allah Taala, this I have this, sir. Yes. So you know, actually, Thank we so will. We, this was the agenda. We just tried to cover the type of burn, degree of burn, extent of burn concerns related to the area of body involved we discussed on almost all these things yesterday okay assessment of burn uh, fluid management okay. with reference to choice rate and problems associated with it 
crystalloid versus colloids okay immediate and yes yes doctor yes doctor zishan i used to follow you on your youtube channel also uh, the uh, the lecture i have missed yesterday i couldn't uh, listen today uh, but inshallah taala i will listen it too okay okay sir uh, yes yes sir. yes, yes aves would you like to ask something uh, yes sir i would like to ask a question Actually, I have a very limited experience with the burn patient. I have worked just for you know, uh, Aves. Aves, I apologize. I would like to listen all your questions, but unfortunately, your voice is so bad, so the sound is coming very slow. So, if you try to speak out a little uh, loud. Okay, sir. Just just give me a second. Uh, can you hear me now, sir? Yes, it is better now. Okay, sir. So I want to ask that uh, in many places it is written that uh, ketamine should be used for repeated dressing. So my question is, why would I like to use the ketamine uh, each and every time? Actually, I have very limited experience with one. No, no. I, I remember, one. remember one thing. Nothing is absolute. Uh, why you know ketamine okay. will be a very good choice in the in that way that ketamine is very good analgesic. Okay, and if you have patient in shock, anyways. Uh, and you are worried that if you give uh, uh, like uh, uh, like high dose of propofol, you might you might need uh, like uh, you uh, you might, might the patient might collapse. So you are using it as a combination ketamine. Okay. So uh, uh, okay. but re remember one thing: then the way which we sometimes are doing cases in emergency is not the ideal way. Okay. We we are doing the debridements on ketamine. Uh, because we are not securing sometimes the airway we are just uh, making a little uh, like uh, putting a face mask and we are, we are doing the case but actually in the exam with the exam point of view and theoretically it's not safe okay it is better to always secure the airway and uh, so the reason for using ketamine that it the burn patient they when they are doing the debridement it is very painful so ketamine will give you a very good analgesic effect Okay, so that is the only point. Otherwise, uh, there is no compelling indication. Okay. Uh, okay, sir. But in the patient, when they are stable and they come for repeated debridement on second day, third day, fourth day, so we use endotracheal tube and proper general anesthesia. I mean, giving mm -hmm. just ketamine, the patient will be having secretion, having tachycardia. So to avoid all those things in a stable patient on his uh, third or uh, fourth uh, day. So we said yes, yes. yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, so actually the challenges which you discussed that about monitoring, IV lines, yesterday we discussed everything. So if anyone has not listened to it, I would suggest to listen it. Um, I'm just looking at if anything missing or oh, infections that they are doing. That's why for that uh, they are doing some debridement, removing the dead tissue, application of uh, specific creams. Okay, temperature management. You you have to keep the environment, uh, the, the OR temperature uh, optimal, and use warm fluids. Otherwise, because it is it will be sometimes difficult to put a bare hacker because maybe patient is fully exposed when they are doing the the debridement. So patient can have uh, like uh, tem uh, hypothermia. Patient can develop hypothermia. Okay, yeah, so similarly, individual electrolyte imbalance you will have and you have to treat it. Specifically, for example, if you um, uh, the urine output is not uh, coming, so you have to if you, if you, even if you find some hypokalemia, just try to be very careful because if you don't have the urine output, this can create a problem. So better you you start some uh, the the balanced salt and let have the the urine output before you replace in slightly higher doses. Okay, so we're, I'm talking with reference to potassium. Similarly. And this stress ulcers can develop, so you you need to give a stress ulcer uh, prophylaxis, okay? And uh, then this uh, DVT prophylaxis, uh, ICU management will be just like any other patient, uh, but this patient will have uh, like uh, uh, maybe have prolonged stay and repeated uh, sessions, okay? Yes, or yes. I think I have discussed almost all the the major aspects, okay? Yes, uh, yes, sir. We have this, but uh, I would like to ask about the uh, stress ulcer. Uh, in the past uh, uh, and then presently in books, it is written 
uh, is two receptor antagonist that enitidine should be given. But I think, sir, it is upside now. It was having some carcinogenic uh, changes in uh, human body, so they stopped it. And uh, mm-hmm. so, sir, uh, presently now we would just use PPIs or uh, there any other is two receptor antagonist. You know, th- remember one thing: this PPI, the discussion between. Uh, proton pump inhibitors and H2 receptor antagonist is one of the controversial topics if in a CGN ICU, just like use of succamethonium, just like use of nitrous oxide. So uh, similarly, colloids versus crystallite. There is no clear cut answer to some people will use it, some people will not use it. Okay. So uh, there are individual studies. Some are saying PPI are good. Some some say H2 receptors are good. I think in majority people, they are using uh, proton pump inhibitors, if I'm not wrong, because I'm not doing ICU, so I'm not uh, not aware of the recent exact recommendations. But uh, that's what I know that there is no fixed guideline for it. Okay, so I think PPI is because uh, with the this H2 receptor antagonist, the arrhythmias can also occur with renitidine specifically, especially. Okay, that's what I know. Okay. Uh, so we will stop here inshallah and uh, day after uh, day after tomorrow on saturday uh, we will have the same session which we did before related to the this uh, uh, correction with the mcqs based as i started weekly so we will have the, our second session we will just try to move on from there and uh, uh, tomorrow because maybe in the evening i will take some session i will just inform you okay So thank you, all of you. And inshallah, we will meet tomorrow, inshallah.